We've got some hey, fresh new I'm Luis. Talent and I'm Luis. You and you're listening before. to the Content One, is Profit two, Podcast. Two, Welcome back to Content is Profit. Happy Monday, Fonzie, as we're recording this. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Are you caffeinated? Are we good to go? I feel like I didn't have too much of a weekend. <laughs> there was no weekend at all. Or at least... I mean, there was a weekend. Too much of a traditional... This is your attempt to rest weekend. <laughs> it was uh, intense. Backstory, I have two kids. Both of my kids' birthdays was this weekend. Luca, the 15th, and Mattel, the 16th. So it was a uh, action-packed, uh, full-on weekend. But anyways, uh, I'm I know. Uh, I, I felt like a five-year-old playing <laughs> the bouncy house and the trampoline for hours. We also played... Uh, then followed by a soccer game, and then followed by another soccer game yeah, the next Sunday morning. morning. Over 30s, but... Uh, it's anyways, intense. Everything hurts. Everything hurts. But anyways, it was lots of fun, and uh, we're happy to be back. Uh, we're sore. That's why we started a little late to <laughs> just walk into the studio. It's like, oh, oh. Anyways, okay. Today, uh, we have part two of the six stages and tools part, and uh, we, st we started just, like, just talking about it last time. It was supposed to be one episode, but we dove in into these amazing tools that can help you with your content production to save a ton of money, improve your processes, increase the speed of output, and uh, hopefully this has been useful for you and you can go and execute with you with your team. That is right. So the six stages are research, creation, production, distribution, monetization, and the operations. We covered the first three on the previous episode. Quick mention of the tools. If you want a little bit more of a deeper dive, make sure you go to the previous episode and listen to it. On the research side of thing, we have fitly.com and we had air. On the creation side, we got Descript and StreamYard. And on the production side, we have Premiere Pro, of course, Team Premiere, let's go, and <laughs> Descript. So again, if you want a little bit more details on how these tools work and how they can help your workflow, make sure you go to the previous one. But today, we're going to be covering the last three, which are distribution, monetization, and the operations kind of thing. So why don't you get us started? Because sure. last time I started with the first one. So go ahead with distribution. What yeah. is your tool? Absolutely. So uh, I have two, but I'm going to lean into one that I'm testing right now that I think is going to be like really useful. It's called repurpose.io. Um, so a lot of the issues with the distribution with that we've experienced personally and uh, with the people that we help is how do you actually get the content out from what you create, right, to like the, the multiple social media platforms, right? And there's a lot of advice out there that says, hey, just focus on one social media platform and then go from there. I personally think, and we've had this discussion before, that this is based on the, on the, on the fact that uh, we might not be looking at full capacity, right? We might not have the resources to tackle all of them. But today, with the help of a tool, you can actually do this, right? So here's the, the before is you had like one piece of content, let's call it a vertical clip, right? And then you go to your individual platform, call it Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube, right? We're posting vertical clips. And uh, you schedule them in the same time. So you schedule your, your Facebook reel or your Instagram reel. You schedule your YouTube shorts. And then you schedule your TikTok, right? So these are three platforms which are publishing the same piece of content. Now, there's other tools that you can do that within, you know, their scheduling system. So you... You upload the video once, and then they distribute into three platforms, right? And then there's the one that I found not so long ago called Repurpose.io. I tested it last week. It looks pretty awesome. And basically, you can set up a workflow or an automation where you can put that clip into a folder, and then the software reads that that clip is in that folder and uploads them into whatever platforms you want on the back end. So you don't even have to upload the content somewhere. So for us, for example, that we have a production team, we can tell them, hey, these clips, put them on this very specific folder. And once it's uploaded there, it will go out to this platform. There's an approval process with your captions and different things, but it's super awesome. The other workflow that you can do is you can actually record something, let's say on YouTube Shorts. That's your main, main platform, right? You record that, you post it on YouTube Shorts, and the software says, okay, I recognize it's a new video on YouTube Shorts. Now I'm gonna put that same video on Reels or on TikTok, right? And you don't have to download, re-upload in any other platform. So I think that's a cool feature if you are creating locally inside of it. Yeah, I will add here, we've kind of noticed a little bit in some platforms when you use third-party apps, you see, tend to see a drop on on reach. So that personally, it's 
you know, we need to test it just to kind of like confirm on it. But I feel like that has something that's been going on for a while. How we do that on our end is we have a very specific Google Drive folder where the team uploads all of the content that is ready to go. So we don't have to go searching in different places. I have that folder as a quick app access on my phone, which I literally, it's like another app. So I click it, it opens that Google Drive folder, and then I select whatever video I want, download it, and then I can post it straight into the platform that I want to post. So yes, takes a little bit more work, but at the same time, think about this, right? Gary V does a similar process as well. He actually has his team message him a whole bunch of content which then he decides, he looks over it and he says, oh, I like this one, I'm gonna post this one. And then he goes into the platform that he's gonna post and he makes that post himself, right? So again, which one is better? Uh, I would say whatever is better for your workflow, for your, again, capacity, resources. Personally, and I'm speaking just for myself, not for my brother, I would lean more into how can I have somebody post within the platform in case that reach does get, you know, we're a, lo a little bit tied up in there. We're talking tools. I know. Well, <laughs> I was going to say, humans are tools. <laughs> 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 Spoken like a true AI. No, I'm kidding. Uh, uh, I, take, I take my mask off and I'm a robot. What would you do? Mm. What would you do? I take my mask off right now and I'm, an, I'm a robot. I mean, like, it makes so much sense. Somebody programmed you the wrong <laughs> way, but it's all good. <laughs> all right, cool. Well, well my tool is use the in-app distribution. Sounds good. Awesome. Okay. Uh, next stage, monetization, right? How do we, now how do we connect that content that's going out consistently into every single platform or the one platform that you choose, right? How do we convert that into actual money for, uh, for your business, right? So there's many ways, but one tool that we've also just started with migrating literally everything to there is called Go High Level. And it's on our side, just because our publishing, our relationships, the people that we create content with, they're direct, directly related to the service that we offer. So we need a way to track it. We need a way to communicate with them. Uh, we need a way to send emails, uh, messages, social media messages, right? And uh, Go High Level does all this. Previously, we had five to six different tools connected with duct tape, right? The system was not was not the best. And uh, last week, we actually sat down and we mapped out what's the pipeline. What is the experience that we want to bring the guest in, right? How can we up, out, automate this? How do we automate the messages that go out to, to these people? And for us, Go High Level seem to be a pretty solid platform. So more on that later. But to me, that's the platform that we're working on today. Also, right, you can create landing pages if you have lead magnets, if you have, like, guides that you want to share with the audience. Hey, go to contentsprofit.com, for example, right, and download, you know, the six stages your team needs to know to create high-profitable content. Spoiler alert, that might be something that you're going to see in there, right? And then mm -hmm. inside of that software, you can create those funnels, and then you can categorize the conversations to increase the revenue in your business. So for me, Go High Level uh, recently has been one of my favorite tools. Yeah, I'm going to have to go with Stripe because guess what? Yes. You can create your product <laughs> in Stripe and then you can process your payments through Stripe. Pretty cool, right? Receive money from somebody else. And, you know, at the end of the day, there are lots of ways to monetize your podcast, right? You can have like brand deals. You can have affiliate marketing. You can sell your own services and products like we do. So on the services and product side of things, Stripe, again, it is use a payment processor and it's just going to facilitate running your business at the end of the day. Yeah, you, you, you need a way to get money. Absolutely. And uh, they make it so easy, right? Like this could be such a, such a hard uh, decision. At maybe if you're a bigger business, right? If you have other payment processors on the back end, but there's a small fee that you pay. If you're a small business, I think this is a great option. Like Fonsi said, right? You can set up your products that you can create payment links that you can just link to your sales page, right? If you don't have like an order page or something like that. And it just makes the whole process like super, super easy. Also, uh, by the way, we're, we're no way affiliated by them. This just helped us move the business forward when we need it to be. But it also allows you to borrow money. So we've actually taken a couple of Stripe loans that have helped us in, you know, sticky situations. And uh, they've been amazing at managing that. So for us, those two, right, you have a place where you can capture the people that want to have conversations with you, right, that you can manage those conversations. And then you have that place to process your payments, 
There you go. Uh, so thank you, Fonzie. I never really thought about Stripe as that tool. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, and you can link it to Go High Level. Yes. And then, you know, you can sell through it, which is awesome. Awesome. Okay. Last uh, one. Last one. The operations of this whole thing. So obviously, we're going to look at this through the lens of the content side of things. We obviously talked a little bit about, you know, the monetization side and the payment processing right before. But how do we actually manage the publishing, right? Like, um, this is something that most people don't think about initially when we're starting to create content. Just because, you know, you're just focusing on like, what am I going to say? Well, how am I going to record it, right? Like the things that we talked in the last episode. But then as you get going, we need a system to track like what has been recorded what are the the topics that we've talked about what are the people that we've interviewed what are the people that we want to interview so for me there's no other option here on the off side of things and the project management side of things uh notion has been so amazing as a tool uh, i think it's notion.io if i or so yeah. right I-O. The IO, mm-hmm. okay, pretty sure. Um, I'll look it up, and it's just a very flexible place. Notion dot so actually. Notion dot so. Uh, we're gonna also leave the link right below. Full disclosure: we became affiliates after a full year of actually using the software, but uh, we manage everything. We manage our podcast flow in there, like who's coming, uh, the cheat sheet that we mentioned every single episode, which is the information that that we follow to do the episode is embedded in that flow, right? The projects with our agency, that's where we track it. You have multiple access. And the cool thing is like it's super malleable. You can actually create whatever you think. Full disclosure, here's going to be, uh, this is going to be a tool for a project management that is a little bit more advanced just because it's a white canvas, right? So uh, you can literally create anything that you want in there and there's different views that you can do. It, it is a mix between uh, any other project management tool with Google Docs with also media embedded in it. So you can actually build a bunch of stuff, really cool things, but it might be a little bit advanced. But yeah, again, there might be a little bit of a learning curve. By the way, like for, for our story, we went through probably five other project management tools before landing in Notion. One of our clients was using it. And after that, we migrated everything in there. So it was ex- actually one of our podcast guests. Absolutely. One that was using it. It was Simon. It was Jeremy. Well, he yes, but that's not when we migrated. We migrated with Simon and... Uh, All right, we'll have out. a debate here on another <laughs> episode about when we started Notion, but I'm pretty certain it, was certain it was with Jeremy. That being said, you know, best bro here always wins the, the debate. Sure. <laughs> uh, for me, I have to go with Notion too. I pretty much use it for every single thing ever. So Notion is amazing. But let's say you're looking for another option, the one that we were using before. I think it's a solid option. It's called Monday, just monday.com. It was pretty cool. It's like Excel sheets in steroids, mm-hmm. you know, has a lot of automation in there. We know of some big agencies that use Monday as well to manage their content creation side of things, which is really cool, right? It has workflows like, okay, when it goes from one stage to the other, immediately assign this other person and send them a notification, yeah. X, Y, and C. So those are really useful things. Now, what I want to invite you to think about is not what is the best tool out in the market because we have all been caught up just searching and searching and trying to maximize our decision. And by trying to do that, we might just stop taking action, right? We might get to a point where we just have so much information that it just creates so much doubt in our minds. So instead, go with what it looks like it can be a viable option, commit to it for a period of time, test it, and then make a judgment of whether that is working for you, right? For you, that's important. Not if it's, oh, but this other person is not doing the same. No, it doesn't matter. If it's working for you, awesome. Keep using that. And if it's not, then go ahead and pivot and try something else that might be better for your needs based on your capacity and your resources. Yeah, absolutely. So, just to wrap up, I'm going to do like a quick flow of like how we use some of these tools in our podcast, right? So let's say we start all the way from the very beginning on the research stage, right? So if we are, if you're researching our own content, right, Fonzie will be using Fitly and I'll be using Air on the podcasting side. And then we bring ideas that we want to bring to the table, depending on the type of topic that we want to discuss that day, right? So then uh, once that's decided, we go into creation mode. So as we manage all this, right, the operation layer is like right at the bottom. So inside of Notion, we open a tab in the podcast flow, which be the episode for that day. 
and we write bullet points of the things that we want to say inside of what we call the cheat sheet of the episode, right? So it'll be like point one, point two, point three, point four, what we feel like it needs to be discussed, and that's managed there, right? As we create, let's say we're not streaming live, but we record it. We'll actually record it directly to this script, right? And as we're recording, we're getting the transcription right off the bat. If we are streaming live, we're going to go to StreamYard. That just adds one extra step after we record on StreamYard. We just download that footage and we dump it on this script so we can get the transcription and get it ready for production. In production, right, there's a couple of steps in there where I, we select the chops. We just clean up the what we call the clean cut, which will be the full episode, right? We clean up the audio. We we'll make sure that it looks good, that we remove any things that we want to remove. And then obviously the team then takes it from there and does the micro content. Then when we go to distribution, like Fonzie described, once the content is ready, then either we post it locally in our phones, right? And right now what I'm doing is I'm testing that repurposed software so we can actually post organically in our phone, but then that takes it to the other platforms and we're testing, right? So far it's been... It's been okay. And then how do we monetize? We send people into the contentsprofit.com landing page coming, coming very soon because of the migration, right? And then we process any type of payment in the back with Stripe in our side. Obviously, if it's a relationship that we built through the podcast and through the podcast flow, then we will jump on a quick call and see if they are a fit for us and we are a fit for them. And then from there, uh, the deal is made of whatever we do. So that's a flow, a very quick flow on how we use these tools. If you want more specifics, feel free to send us a quick DM at BizBrosco and we can go through it. And hopefully if we're a fit to collaborate with each other, we can. Anything else, Fonz? No, I think that's it. Pretty good. Pretty solid. Yeah. Should should you do a, an example or should we do a sample with a clip, for example? I mean, podcast episode is a little bit of a bigger process, but should we do a, a clip? Well, we can. Why not? The clip would be exactly the same, right? Let's say we're doing <laughs> research, right? I'm using Feedly to kind of like monitor the news that are going out there, things new. And all of a sudden I see, wow, Instagram just released a new update where you can see the average watch time on your reels. I was like, oh, this is interesting. This is timely. I can definitely make a piece of content with this. So then we go into the creation mode. Now, for just a clip like that, I wouldn't go into this script or StreamYard because that is more based on the podcast, but I would literally just create something specifically from the phone. So I would just screenshot parts of the article that I want to reference, and then I would go inside of Instagram, and I would just add the green screen effect and talk in front of the article, pinpointing the, the points that I want to make. Obviously, giving my opinion, because when you are the expert, you need to be comfortable sharing your own opinion. Then after that, that is, you know, part of the production as well that happened inside of the app. Now, let's say I don't want to edit that. I just want my team to kind of like spiff it up, add subtitles to it, etc. I could download the video and then I would upload it to the operational side of things in Notion to the project board. I would say, hey, this is a clip. This is what I'm looking for. And then obviously for by when do I want it? It seems timely. I probably am going to put a due date in the next 24, 48 hours. Then the team goes and works on it on the production side of things. They use Premiere Pro, right? Edit that. And then they send it back to me where I distribute it, right? I usually get it in my Google Drive folder that is called hashtag to publish content that is ready to go for you to enjoy. And, <laughs> and I just go in that folder, download the clip, and then I just go on Instagram myself and post it. Pretty much it. Very simple. Easy peasy. I'm easy actually, peasy. I'm actually going through... Like, it's simple, but it's not easy. Let me tell you. Yes, that's right. I'm actually going through uh, the metrics that Fonsi say, like organically versus not, and everything seems to be consistent on the schedulers except TikTok. That has been our feedback so far. As I'm uh, as I'm looking at it, so we have some more testing to do. There's some that you know are a little bit uh, higher, uh, you know, engagement and and views. But at the at the end of the day, is what translates into into sales side, right? So that's why we rely a lot on the outbound for for agency. But I'm I'm curious, like, what are the tools that you're using in your process? What are the tools that you've used? Um, a lot of the cases are, hey, I didn't really know a tool like that existed. We don't really take time to research some of those tools. Uh, I understand if we're a bigger company, same thing. Like maybe there's not allocated time to, you know, research and development in your content systems. We totally get it, right? So that's why we do it for you. So we're going to be completely 
honest and we're testing these things to see if they work for us and for the people that, that we help and support. I highly recommend take a little bit of, of your own time or if you do have a team, task them with researching what are some of the tools that you can be using, especially now with AI. I think there's a lot of possibilities out there to increase output, to increase feedback and uh, to make sure that your content is getting out to the world. So with that said, I think that's the episode. Fonsi? Yeah, go create, go hit publish. That's right. Thank you so much for tuning into the Contents Profit Podcast. Go ahead and follow the show in your favorite podcasting platform and on social media at Beast Bros Co. That is right. If today's episode help you become a better creator and put your content out into the world, please don't forget to share this episode and, and leave a five-star review. See ya. Bye, guys.